Well, I had a lot of fun making this video. What I did was I made five little characters, little people, using as many embellishing techniques as I could think of. I'm going to put up video clips of those little people right here so you get an idea of what I made in this video. I really liked making it. I hope you enjoy watching it. And uh, please like my videos, share them, and subscribe. It means a lot to my channel. So thank you very much and enjoy the video. Well, today I am going to turn some little people. And when my boys were little, 40 years ago or so, we had a Fisher-Price toy that had these little tiny people. We used to call them peoples. I'm not sure if that's the correct term. But anyway, today I'm going to do something for some kids. I'm going to turn some little people out of some nice blocks of wood here. And I'll show you what those are in just a second. Anyway, I'm going to just uh, start turning and, and find out who's inside this block of uh, box elder. Okay, now the first thing I need to do is take these blocks of wood and turn them all around. Okay, this is, uh, I think, some spalted hackberry. I've got some box elder and I got a couple pieces of cherry. So I'm going to put these between centers and I'm not sure how much I'll show you, but we need to get them down to round and then we'll go from there. Okay, now as I turn this, I'm going to wear a face shield and I'm going to wear a glove. And it's not necessarily a safe thing to do. You have to be really careful. You don't want to get a glove caught in something. But uh, I'm going to turn this uh, relatively fast. Get this down to uh, a round block of wood. And what I have here is I have a robust safety drive on the headstock. And in the tailstock, I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. In the tailstock, I've got a live center that doesn't have a point. And I'm going to do this pretty much between centers. All right, I'm not going to put a tenon on these. I'm going to just do this kind of fast and funky. So here we go. Where's my face shield? Tighten this down really well. Let's see what I'm going to be turning at because somebody's going to ask. I got uh, about 1300 RPM right now. Okay, I'm using a spindle roughing gouge. This is a really nice piece of uh, box elder. It's a little bit of a burl. And the main event for this video, the main thing I'm going to do is use some embellishing techniques to make a face and maybe a hat or something. I'm not sure what. Um, I'm going to put up another piece. Let's just uh, turn a couple of these around. And I can recenter these. You know, with the same fixing I've got right here. All right, now here's a nice piece of cherry. Get that kind of lined up. I'm just eyeballing this right there. All right, now you may have noticed when I was uh, roughing down that first piece of wood that my live center was slipping. Okay. Just a little bit. Now, this is a safety drive. And it's meant to do that. If you get a tool caught, if you get your finger caught in there, heaven forbid. Um, depending on how tight you have your tailstock, this will slip. Okay, and I really like a safety drive like that. Okay, one more uh, round over here. slippage so I'm going to tighten that up. 
And that cherry is going to be real nice. It's going to uh, embellish very nicely. So I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and I'll show you uh, the next step in this operation of making some peoples. Okay, as I rough these down to round, I thought I would show you one more angle before I moved on. So you could at least see where the tool is hitting the wood. All right. Alright, spindle rough and gouge, not for cross grain. It's the most uh, versatile tool in your shop. So, okay, that's good enough. We'll uh, get the last one rounded over here and we'll move on. Alright, I'm going to start designing my first peoples. And here's my safety drive center right here. And this is designed to take this ring off. Okay, this is for a little bit bigger uh, contact area on your piece of wood. So this is going to allow me to get in a little closer when I'm finishing this area down here. And I'm going to finish this all up between centers. No chuck on this. And I've got a little groove in there for my live center. We'll tighten that down. All right. And that's running nicely true. So I'll probably get um, a spindle gouge and I may use a skew chisel as I do this. So I need to take off all the flats and see what I got here. All right, a little bit more work with a skew chisel. Now, somebody asked me the other day on a YouTube channel if I could put in a rectangular tang or piece of steel into one of these robust collets. And yes, you can. I've got several tools that aren't round. This is a skew chisel. And you just put that in there and find a a collet that uh, that works it it holds it quite well okay so Clean up the end here. Okay, I've got a, a small, uh, this is a quarter inch spindle gouge that I'm going to start off with. And I think I'm a little bit loose here. Always good to check your connection. So I'm going to start, I'm going to make this the, the top or the head of my little piece. It's just a parting tool, so I'm going to define where the head is on this.
right there. Take my, my gouge here. I'm a little bit high on my my tool rest. I went after a, a little bit smaller skew chisel. Okay, and I'm going to put that into my my collet chuck. Another one. I've got uh, several handles made up <laughs> like that. And it's this is a good time to practice. In this case, a little bit of skew chisel work. Alright, now I'm going to raise my tool rest up just a little bit and that's always a good idea when you're using a skew chisel because a lot of that has to do with comfort. Uh, I think my, my head <laughs> is a little bit big in diameter. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Sometimes you get a catch. All right. Okay, now, <clears throat> as I'm turning this, I like this little detail right here. That could be a hat. It could be some hair. I'm not sure at this point. And then another thing you can do, you can put eyeballs, you can put a nose. I like to put a sunglasses uh, feature on there. Yeah, and then buttons or, you know, you do whatever you want to do and you can use whatever embellishing technique you'd like to do. Okay, I need to work on that just a little bit more. Okay, I put a little sharpen on my, my spindle gouge. Now, one thing that can happen when you're doing this, you can spend a lot of time messing around with one of these little peoples. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a, a little bit of a tool mark there. I'm going to take off with my, my skew chisel. Now, what I just did 
I basically turned a little bit of a cove right here with my skew chisel. And if you have a little bit more of a, a rounded convex edge, you can you can do that. You can you can turn a, a pretty good uh, cove with that. So I'm happy with that. I think I'll go on and and turn another one before I start embellishing. I got some ideas on this. I'm going to do a little texturing on the very top of this area right here and I'm going to call that hair and then I'll color it later on. I just got a, a Robert Sorby spiraling tool. I'm not sure if I can get in here. go. Yeah, that'll be good. And the nice thing about this is um, because I've got this between centers like this, I can just put this on and off my lathe. Now, the very top of that, I can make that a little detail somehow. All right, let's move on to another one. This is some cherry. Let's pick a piece of this nice box elder. <clears throat> Make sure that's cinched down real good. And I'm going to go back to my, my skew chisel and finish this up. Now one thing I need to do, maybe, is I've got a lot of stuff going on here. I've got a bark inclusion, I've got some kind of burl figure, a little bit of color. I'll try to incorporate some of that in my finished piece. I might as well, I think it's a good idea, and I maybe, well, do some coloring, but anyway, we'll see that a little bit later. Same tool handle, and I'm going to use a little bit larger spindle gouge on this. Now, you are hearing a lot of bouncing with my tool. I've got quite a bit of, uh, you know, like bark inclusions and different things going on there. I think I might take some CA glue and, and stabilize these areas. Uh, I think that'll be good. Okay, now this is a piece of box elder I was working on. And what I've done is I've colored the hat with some black marker. I'm going to do a little texturing on this and then I'm going to fill it in with some uh, oh, some gilt cream. Get my tool in here. And I'll probably show you uh, bits and pieces of these different little people figures. Well, 
looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of a void right here. I may may end up filling that up. I'm not sure what I'll do with that. I've got a lot of different uh, colors, a lot of different ways to apply a color. This is a Chromacraft product. And boy, Chromacraft has all kinds of really, really good, good stuff there. Nick Agar is a representative. He sells a lot of, a lot of Chromacraft items. So I just got some of this on my finger. That's the best paintbrush I have. And what I want is for the, the color to uh, kind of go down into the valleys of that texture I just did. That looks pretty good. You know, these, these don't have to be a work of art. These are for kids and they're, they're going to knock these around and hopefully play with them. So I'm going to turn my lathe back on. Just take a paper towel and, and wipe off the excess of that from the surface. And yeah, that's not too bad. I'll just I'll just play with that a little bit. Uh, try to get get some of that off so the texture is highlighted a little bit. And I might let that dry. So I'm going to go back and work on the body of this. Make sure that's where I want it to be. Do Now, kids love color. We all love color, don't we? And I've got um, a little tote here full of uh, markers. And my favorite marker or source for markers is Faber-Castell. And most of these are those Faber-Castell. It's got a, a paintbrush tip on it. So I'm going to turn your camera over here so you can see this a little bit better. I'm going to put a little bit more color on this. And I can see I've also got some uh, Chromacraft markers in here. There's a Chromacraft marker. All right, now. I would call these stylized. Uh, these are not going to be realistic little people by any means. So I'm going to pick one of my colors here. And if this is the body, this is the head right here, I'm going to put a little color down here. I'm not sure what, what that is exactly. I'm going to turn my speed down, but here's my marker with that paintbrush tip and I really like these. Again, these are uh, Faber-Castell and I hope I remember to put a link up because they're, they're really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to turn my lathe in reverse and apply a little bit more of that right there. And I'm going to keep working on this. Some place in here I need to put a face. I've got to have a face and I'm not sure. There's a lot going on right there. It's a little bit crazy. Ah, yeah. Now over the years I've collected a number of different uh, oh, tools for embellishing. And one of them is my biography burner. This is a razor tip. And my wife really is the expert in the family for biography. And she's got a razor tip that is a double. It, it holds two of the burners. So I've got a, an area right here that's pretty clear. Little little bit of an area right here that I'm going to put a couple eyeballs in. 
And this particular uh, pyography burner is just a little circle. So I'm going to make sure my, my heat is correct. A little bit more. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing, but I'll, I'll give you a close-up, certainly. All right, that's not too bad. I need another eyeball here. I think I need a little bit more heat. Now, I'm going to change my pen. Let this one cool down a little bit. And what I'm going to put in here now is really a skew. I can get this someplace where you can see it. And I think I'm going to try to make some uh, glasses on this guy. So I'm going to go right between, right between the eyeballs. there and you know what I would call this is stylized did I mention that yeah I think that's pretty good oh yeah that's not too bad now, right down here in the body, I'm going to add some buttons. And again, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing here, but uh, right down through here, I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, I've done a lot of these, and you know, it's always fun. You can't really mess it up. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to put a little coat on this guy. I'm not sure if it'll look like a coat. Change my burner once again. Let me come around here and maybe you can see this. Now, I gotta have a nose. Don't have a nose yet. Okay. All right, now I've got another burner in my uh, razor tip. And I need to really make something that looks a little bit like an ear. I got the, the glasses coming down around here. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to quit right there. Maybe do a little more coloring. I'm not sure. I might just spray a clear coat on that because I think that's pretty pretty good. I could spend uh, hours on one of these and it's not worth it. But And if you, if you look at the top here where I've got that gilt cream, I really need to spray that. You have to be really careful not to rub something on there like a finish and it can bleed but you do need to seal that all right let's move on to another another little people now i recently contacted tom ackley of axe paste and asked if he would give me a discount coupon for my club here in billings and he uh gladly sent me one and i'm going to share that with you i'm going to put that in my videos uh, the next month or so advertising his really really nice uh, abrasive paste and polishing restoring compound so the coupon is SAM 15 you'll get a 15% discount so yeah go ahead if you're ready to order some more of Axe Paste there it is thanks all right now I'm getting back to my my blank of cherry Okay, I've got it kind of roughed out. I got a head here and what I did before um, I took a 
texturing tool, this one, and I just put some, what I'm going to uh, call hair on the top of this. I've got a brown marker. I'm going to just turn my lathe on, not too fast, and I'm going to find the broad broad marker on that. Another, this is another one of, uh, this marker comes from uh, Dick Blick. And, and that's a really, really good outlet for uh, finishing supplies, markers, colors, a lot of different things. Dick Blick. And I just put some hair on this. Yeah, I like it. Do a little bit more. And again, I'm going to spray this with uh, some, uh, well, that's right here. I'm going to spray this with matte finish. This is a Krylon product. If I can get that in, in there a little bit better. Um, okay, there it is. Krylon matte finish. And you can put four or five coats on this piece and it doesn't look like there's any finish at all. It's really, really good for sealing wood. All right, I'm going to uh, see what I have to do next on this piece. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, oh, I don't know, embellishing. And uh, i got to think about this just a second. I'm going to... Uh, Increase this little valley right here. I've got a, a very small detail tool and You can just watch the horizon as I develop this I'm gonna make sure I'm all locked down I need a little bit more speed, okay? Now I'm going to try to show you as many different embellishing techniques as I can because it's okay if I get a little bit crazy with this. It doesn't matter all that much. I've got a piece of uh, countertop laminate. You know, we usually call this Formica, but it's not really uh, necessarily a Formica product. I'm going to put a little burn mark right down here in the valley. See if we get some, some smoke going. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to do one more thing here. And I'm going to take a point tool. I'm going to take a blue marker, okay, and I'm going to just color this in. And I'm going to take a skew chisel and clean this up. There. So that's, that's a little bit better. I had that blue marker all over the place there. Now, this is a very good grind for something like this. I can get in there and just kind of go from uh, the top down to the valley of that cove from both sides. Turn my speed up just a little bit. You know, <laughs> I shouldn't admit this, but sometimes something develops as I'm turning, and that to me looks like a belt, you know, or some kind of a detail. I'm gonna 
I'm going to keep that in there. All right, why not? Do a little bit more turning, make that make that belt stand out just a little bit more. Take my my point tool and define this area just a little bit more there. Another tool that I sometimes forget about is the Joe Wagner texturing tool. And I got a couple of these. Actually, this one is put out by Apprentice, but it's also a Wagner texturing tool. Anyway, they just have different uh, wheels on them. And... Uh, I consider these to be more of a tool that imprints the wood rather than cuts it. Uh, I'm going to pick the smaller one. So I'm going to put a little bit of that texture here and here. I'm turning about 800 RPM on my dial. Oh, I like that. I don't know if you can see the fine detail in that, but I I was pressing fairly hard. Let's do the other other part of this. I'm going to turn my speed down, turn this in reverse, put a little color on this. Now I like that a lot. I'm going to find another, another color. One of my favorite things to do is to put one color on top of another color. Uh, what do we got here? Just do, do blue. Everybody likes blue. Maybe a little bit more speed on this. Alright, that's very cool. I don't know. Maybe I do need eyeballs up here. Four or five, I don't know. We shouldn't forget that maybe the simplest way to do something, in this case, is with a pencil. I want to define these areas where I just took my point tool and made a groove. I just take a pencil. There. This is pretty cool so far, but I, I think I need a little bit of color on this bead. Now something else I have someplace in a drawer is um, our colored pencils. Oh, this is, this is, okay. Here we go. This is a good one. A little bit of red. Ah. And you don't want a lot of speed when you're doing the coloring because you can you can wear out your your marker. And you might need a couple applications on there. 
Now I'm going back to my my skew and I'm going to make some sort of a funky eyeball on this. <clears throat> okay, I'm moving right along with my uh, Little People project. I took a couple days off, so I'm just getting back to making these little characters. This is uh, one I worked on earlier. Now, I'm going to end up with this little nub of wood on the top of this, and I'm thinking I might, I might try to put those in some chuck jaws just to kind of remove that or make a detail out of it anyway. There's one of those little guys. Now, let me talk a second about finishing. Um, I think I showed this earlier. This is one of my favorite finishes that I use. This is a Krylon Matte Finish. And I think artists use this. Um, they put this on a canvas to paint over or something like that. But it, it really imparts um, little or no finish that you can see, okay? It's not shiny at all. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm gonna put a little shine on these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover this up with some deft lacquer, clear wood finish, which is a lacquer. Anyway, I've got a couple coats on this piece and I'm, I'm pretty much done with it. Anyway, that's kind of different. Um, I think the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to make a top hat. And uh, we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to try, try to show you as many different embellishing techniques as I can. I think I'll take this out and prepare for another one. There we go. Okay, I've got my next victim here <laughs> chucked up. Um, this is spalted uh, hackberry. Anyway, I'm going to make a top hat for this piece and I'm I'm going to cut this off right in here. I could make this section right here a top hat. Now I could make this area right here the top hat, but I don't want this grain. I don't want that to run through. Plus, I'm going to take that top hat and put it at an angle on top of the head. This area right here, I'm going to just make make a head. <laughs> That's all it's going to be. There's no body for this one. So let me uh, continue. I got this kind of rounded over and I'm going to part this off. And what I'm going to do, I've got a, a piece of uh, poplar here that I'm going to make into my top hat. All right, now one thing I'm going to do before I forget, I've got some some wormholes in this that have been kind of filled in by the, the critter that was eating this wood away. It's a little bit hard, but I'm going to put some CA glue on that and fortify it a little bit. And I'm going to just cover the entire surface with CA glue, and that way I won't get any uh, color discoloration. Color discoloration, yeah. And I'll take some accelerator. And at some point I'll I'll go over this and sand it. I'm gonna find a chuck to work on this piece here. Okay, now it it's always fun to kind of uh, <laughs> watch as a uh, as a demonstrator messes up and I had the hat upside down. Okay, this is the part down here that goes on the head. This is the top of the top hat. Let me do just a little bit more on this. Take my skew chisel and uh, surface the top area right here. A 
Okay, now these are always fun projects to practice and practicing with my skew chisel that's good enough to sand right there so I'm going to part this off right in here. Let me start that. I'm going to undercut this just a little bit. A little bit more speed. And there we go. So it's going to sit, it's going to sit someplace like that, and that's pretty good proportion. All right. Let me put this back into some chuck jaws. I think I'll find a, some pin jaws to work on this, and then we'll attach the uh, top hat. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to just take my my skew chisel as a scraper and just kind of go over this, and I'm going to rechuck this up. I'm going to reverse this, but I'm going to do it in this area right here. And I'm going to make a, a little bit better tenon right here for my pin jaws. I do just a little bit of sanding because I know how much y'all love love sanding. Uh, um, just FYI, I've got uh, a Nova Chuck with some pin jaws here. I just moved this out a little bit so I could get in that that area down by my chuck jaws and do that sanding. And I promise I won't show you too much of this. And I'm not trying to make this uh, extremely smooth, necessarily. I don't think some four-year-old is going to care. Yeah. All right. And uh, I'll probably save this. I, I won't put a finish on this right now. Let me reverse this. Put this end into my, my pin jaws. So this will be the top of the, no, this will be the base. It'll sit like that. So I need to uh, have a little flat area right there. And really it doesn't matter. They're, they're both kind of round. So, But I do need a, a little bit of an area that uh, can sit on a table or something. So this is going to be where my top hat's going to be. Uh, all right, now I need to take that off. Yeah, and I'm going to find a little bit more of a, a spindle gouge, just a quarter inch spindle gouge. Turn my speed up a little bit. Go back to my my skew chisel as a scraper. Alright, now this is a little bit just like making a sphere. Okay, so it's a head without a body on this little people. Poor little people. So I need to make a better connection between this area that I uh, hollowed out and the top of my head. Yeah. And I'll probably just uh, use some epoxy to glue that on there. Um, I'm going to ebonize this or blacken it some way off camera and it'll sit a little bit like that. Yeah, that'll be cool.
All right, it's time to do a little bit of uh, gold leaf on the bottom of this little people. And this is real gold leaf. I don't often use this, but I thought, you know, I'm going to use this today. These are very small sheets. If I can uh, get one of these out of here. i got a little brush here that hopefully I can latch on to this. Now it's going to take several um, sheets of this gold leaf to cover this area. That was a little bit more successful. I thought I would leave my my little people in in the lathe and that'll help hold it on there. Get one more of these sheets. Now what it, what I've done here, I've taken a little Vaseline and I've smeared it on my arm. So I take this brush just very lightly load up my my brush with a little bit of that Vaseline. That one got away from me, but I caught it. There are a couple little areas that that I haven't got to. I'm going to just take my my gold leaf and drag it on there. Right there. There's a spot up here. And hopefully, um, there's still some of that contact cement there. When I get done here, I'll show you the, the contact cement that I used. It's an oil-based uh, cement glue. A little spot right there. I usually don't use real gold leaf because I rather mess up with the cheap stuff. Um, usually referred to simply as metal leaf because it's not not gold leaf. And this really isn't all that terribly expensive if you do a small area like this. Just take my brush and there's there's a little piece I can use if I see an area that's not covered. Maybe right here. <laughs> and I'm gonna just brush this off. Take a look at it. Alright, let me show you the uh, the sizing that I use, this is fast dry gold size. Get that in, in the camera right there. And this is an oil based product. Okay, and I've started to use this. I really like this. You can use a spray or there's a number of different ways you can apply this. But basically it's, it's a contact cement. You apply it and then you just kind of touch it with your knuckle and see if it's dry dry enough to uh, still attract the the gold leaf let me see here all right so i'm going to just take my brush and brush off the excess gold leaf from the surface and pat that down a little bit and i'm going to take a 
one of these little bits of paper here and uh, take the uh, handle on a brush here and just kind of go over that and burnish that and make sure that's uh, secured really well and then I'll just let it let it dry all right here is the last of the little people oh my gosh I had a lot of fun doing this let me take this guy off and uh, little gold leaf I think that's pretty neat uh, here's the face and boy I got the nose way out of line there I may have to fix that I don't know there's the top I really like that feature let me show you some proper uh, pictures and uh, thank you for hanging in there with me this has been a long video but uh, anyway I really had a lot of fun doing it so I'll see you next time thank you